All right, so I'll give you some help with the genetics problem that you asked for. So uh, I'll help you with the odds. Oops, I didn't move that. So let me move this up a little bit. Okay, so um, we've got Punnett squares over here because you have to show your work. So you can either show those, uh, you can draw small Punnett squares, or you can do a separate piece of paper and attach it. So you're going to cross, uh, number one says you cross two heterozygous green plants, and yellow is recessive. So, and then says, since like we did yesterday in class, uh, we got two heterozygous plants. So um, it's named after the dominant trait. So we'd have G and G. Okay, so this is dihybrid cross. So we're going to cross two heterozygous plants. So that's our cross. So we'd be a capital G and a lowercase g, and a capital G and a lowercase g. And then you just fill out your squares. Making your combinations. All right, so we do our cross, and it says um, show the phenotype ratios and the genotype. So I'll just use a capital G for genotype ratios. Uh, I have one to two to one. So you can see I have one. to two to one, right? So that's my genotype ratio. So my genotype is one to, to one. And my phenotype ratio, I'll just use a P here. All right, so if you look at my phenotype ratios, Should have done that. So remember, I had G, All right? So my phenotype ratios, these, since they all have capital G's, um, will be green. So I have. Three green to one yellow. Okay, so I have three green to one yellow. I got the squiggly pen, so I apologize for that. So that's how you do that basically. So you just draw a punnett square. Um, so if we look at number three, brown hair is dominant to blonde. Jill has blonde, but her parents are brown, as Jill adopted. So um, we can set up again where we can say that that B is equal to brown and B is equal to blonde, right? So both of uh, her parents are brown, so her parents are essentially B. So we know they have at least one dominant allele. Uh, and the other one could be recessive. So if both parents are heterozygous, right, then we can set up our cross. Which would give us a blonde right there. So uh, is Jill adopted? Can't tell by this, right? So maybe yes, maybe no. So uh, cannot tell. So number five, in fruit flies, long wing is dominant to vestigial wing, right? Um, so fruit flies are actually named after the uh, wild type trait, but we can name them uh, the way we want to name them. So, vestigial means short wings, they can't fly. Um, uh, so, a long winged fly whose mother was long winged and father was vestigial is crossed with a vestigial winged fly. What is the probability of ability to have vestigial? So, the parents. 
the parents. Um, so a long winged fly whose mother was long winged and father was vestigial. So the mother was long winged and the father was vestigial, right? So I get long vestigial, long vestigial. Um, and we don't know about those. So if we could say that this right here, right, uh, is the only, our only choice for the next Punnett squared. So if I get another Punnett squared, um, so we know that this parent, this one has to be long and vestigial. Uh, it's crossed with another that is all vestigial. Right? Then uh, what is the probability that the offspring will have vestigial wings? So here we get long vestigial, long vestigial. So we can see that these are vestigial. So this is uh, roughly 50%, right? So this is two out of four, or 50%. So we're just using Punnett squares to make probabilities. So in number seven, we have a die cross. So the ability to run is, re is dominant and run in circles is recessive. Black fur is dominant, brown is recessive. So we're going to cross a heterozygous running. So we have RR. So a heterozygous running and a heterozygous black with a homozygous running. and a homozygous black, All right? Uh, probable genotypes and phenotypes. All right, so we're gonna separate them into two squares, like I told you to do uh, yesterday. So we have R, R, and we have breaking these down a little bit. All right. All right, so we have two capitals here. We have two capitals there. So this is four out of four running. And it's two capitals here, two capitals there. And this is heterozygous and heterozygous. So this is four out of four black. So possible genotypes and phenotypes. So uh, the phenotypes. So the genotypes we would have. Um, So we look at it. So we'd have fifty percent All right. Well actually no. Hold on a second. Let me calculate. I also did the wrong thing. So the genotypes, uh, we have to use the multiplication rule. So for the genotypes for here, yeah. For RRBB is a possibility. We have two out of four times two out of four is equal to four out of 16. We have RRBB, right? And the same thing. We have two out of four times two out of four.
right? So if you if you look at this, we're going to get we have R R D B. Right, so it's going to be a quarter each way. So the genotype is a quarter and quarter. And the phenotype is all running on black. Right, so there's a quarter for each genotype. Uh, there was one more genotype there, which would have been um, RR, or heterozygous the whole way. So um, you can figure that out using the multiplication rule. Number nine, in garden peas, tall is dominant over dwarf. Right, and purple is dominant over white, so we can use those T is equal to tall, lowercase t is equal to dwarf, purple, and lowercase purple is white. Right, so we're going to cross a heterozygous tall. Uh, white flower with a homozygous tall uh, heterozygous purple flower. So heterozygous tall, so it would be T, lowercase t, uh, with a white flower, so that's a lowercase p, lowercase p, uh, with a homozygous tall, which is 2t, capital T's, and a heterozygous purple. So we're going to cross those, right? So if we go, we have uppercase, lowercase, and two uppercases. Uh, and then we have two lowercases. We have an upper and a lower. All right. So you can do those crosses, and it's a lot like the one we just did above. Uh, you get two uppercases. All right. We got an uppercase, lowercase, and an uppercase, lowercase. So this is all. We get an upper and a lower, upper and a lower, lower, lower. And this is two out of four are purple, and two out of four, right? So they're all tall with half the flowers being purple and half being white, right? So that would be our cross there. And the last one I'll help you with. Uh, is number 11, right? So a number 11, you have a black guinea pig, and you want to know its genotype. You know the black fur is dominant over gray fur. If after four crosses, four guinea pigs later, you don't have a single gray guinea pig, um, can you be 100% sure that the genotype is black? And the answer is no. Um, we would have, uh, so black over brown, so black would be our capital. Right, and we'll cross it with a test cross, and a test cross is using um, uh, something that's uh, homozygous recessive. So lowercase b is gray. So you would still get fifty percent black, and we wouldn't know what this is. So it's important to remember that each offspring is individual and unique. So as long as there's a chance that one of them is going to have that phenotype, then it's possible, right? So if I have two carriers of cystic fibrosis, um, the chance is one of four that they'll have, or 25% they'll have a child with cystic fibrosis. And I remember in school uh, with medical genetic class I took, uh, they talked about a family that had four children in a row who had cystic fibrosis, right? Which is improbable, but it happens, right? So the answer is no, you can't be 100% sure because each birth, there's a chance, right? Even though the chance is less. Um, so we don't know. But if we know that the guinea pig is in fact heterozygous, right? So if the guinea pig is heterozygous, so we know that this should be here, right? So I should have two out of four. What's the chance of it happening? Well, it would be a two out of four times two out of four, times two out of four.
You could fill out all your Punnett squares, but that would be it. So, and then you would just have to solve them out there. And that's the, that's the probability of having that happen. Well, I hope this was helpful, and I will talk to you next week.